What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Let Dirt Fly YouTube channel. So today we start a brand new project for the channel and that's this. A 2014 Polaris Sportsman 570. As you can see, uh, doesn't look so good, but we're gonna be fixing this thing up. So I picked this thing up on Facebook Marketplace for a really good deal, um, really cheap, and because it had some issues. It had a blown axle that the guy couldn't get out. I got it out using a sledgehammer. Now, unfortunately, he did roll this quad, so the plastics are broken and everything. Picked up some used plastics. I think I have all the parts to put this quad back together. So in today's episode, we're actually gonna be rebuilding the transaxle. Now, the transaxle is basically the rear diff and transmission all as one. So you see it's this whole big guy right here. This, all back here. So it's gonna be a quite the project. We have to remove all the suspension components, probably the exhaust, get that out of our way. Air box has to come out. And while we're doing all this, I'm gonna re be rebuilding the suspension as well. This thing has some blown rear shocks. I'm gonna imagine the front shocks are blown too, but I didn't order those yet. I only got the rear shocks. Get new axles, because the axles that he bought, unfortunately, aren't the right ones. And all new bushings. All right, so right now, I'm gonna go ahead, pull the belt box off remove the clutches, and then start disassembling all suspension, get that all out of our way so we can actually get this transaxle out on the bench and see what we got to work with. So real quick, I wanna show you Polaris owners a quick little trick to removing the uh, belt. You just take a washcloth or a rag and put it around the belt and I pull out and yank at the same time. If I can get a good grip on it here. There we go. Now, if your clutch doesn't come off that easy, they do sell a puller. You can get it goes right on. You can get on Amazon pretty cheap. Works out good. So here's your primary puller here. These things are a lifesaver. All right, so for my tool, it's a 7 8 socket. Could be a metric size, it's ever so slightly loose, but it'll work for our application here. Just like that. Now I just gotta get the backing plate off here. Basically, I just have a zip tie here that's not even tight on this thing. All right, so to get the back plate off once you have your clutches out of the way, this is three eighths bolts all the way around. All right, cover is off. All right, so now with the back plate off, we can actually get in here and get to the bolts here that we need to remove in order to get the transaxle up. But first, we gotta go ahead and remove all the suspension stuff, which is gonna be a blast. Let's take the air box out real quick. That takes two seconds and keep on trucking along here. Right, so removing the suspension is actually pretty easy. Uh, this is mostly all 916 stuff. I think a couple 5.8s here and here. And then we need 916s for that. And then we just need a big uh, socket for our axle nut here so we can get the axle out. So first let me get the 916 stuff out of the way here. Now one thing that's always smart to do is after removing a bolt or anything like that, or a screw, nut, whatever. Um, what you want to do is actually just put it back in that same spot because then you'll know where it goes when you go to put the quad back together because obviously we're moving a lot of crap, so want to make sure we're good to go that way. Actually, I just realized for, for my sake, guys, I'm actually gonna wait to remove this because I'm just gonna take the entire arm right off right here. Because I gotta get this guy out of my way regardless. Than a few minutes later. 
All right, so finally got this thing out of the quad. Had a heck of a time doing it, but got her out on the floor here. Time to open this thing up and see what we got inside. So looks like this is gonna be a bunch of half inch bolts. So we're gonna go all the way around this, get everything all opened up here. All right, now we pry. There we go. And we're losing stuff. Awesome. All right, guys, so it's actually the next day. I went ahead and I want to re record what I had. I didn't realize the camera angle afterwards was pretty bad, so I want to get a better angle of what we're dealing with once you pop this cover open. So basically, once you get the cover off, you can probably see this. Now, sometimes this whole contraption here is gonna come off. This is the uh, chain tensioner for the main chain here. So go ahead and pop that off. Like I said, it might have already popped off when you popped off the cover. We're just gonna take this stuff, set it off to the side. Let me just get this out of here. There's two little dowel pins that hold in the little cam gear here. And uh, this is what helps uh, keep the chain tight basically as the uh, chain breaks in over time. So set those off to the side for now. Then you can go ahead and remove the main gear here. All right, set that up to the side as well. And a chain. All right. All right, so on the chain, you wanna make sure everything feels nice and tight. You shouldn't have too much side to side movement if you pull it back and forth like this deal. Not too bad, this one looks okay. Um, also, you wanna see where your chain tension is set at. Um, if it's too far down, that means the chain's probably wore out. Uh, this still has some life left in it. You're also gonna wanna inspect the teeth themselves on the gear. Everything on this one looks good. The bearings also look good on this. Um, now, if you are going to replace the bearings and get a full rebuild kit, um, these would feel very scratchy. You'd have to use a puller to pull these guys off and then you'd want to freeze this gear actually and then heat the crap out of the new bearing and they'll slide right on to this guy. Push them all the way on. Um, now one thing I did already off camera is I cleaned up the surface here. Um, this is what rides on the um, new seals that I actually replaced. Um, the reason I came into this gearbox, I wanted to inspect everything. I was here in a weird clank, everything looks good, but um, I just want to go over what you'd be replacing if you were to do a complete overhaul of this thing. Uh, like I said, you want to clean up this surface here uh, because this is what rides on our new nice uh, bushing there. So I'm just going to set this out to the side for right now. And then we're going to go ahead and get a Torx bit out. So you're going to need a T20 Torx bit. Go ahead and remove, there's two screws that hold in the uh, a little plastic piece that uh, oils helps oil the gears. This is actually the second time I'm doing this because I wanted to get a good video for you guys of everything so you guys can see and know exactly what you're gonna have to do. Set those screws off to the side, don't lose them. This plastic piece, piece pops off. I wanna make sure this is all intact. Sometimes if you have a broken chain or another broken piece or something, something broke in your transmission, well transaxle rather, um, it can break this pretty easily. So I've seen a lot of guys have issues with this braking. Just have to order another one from Polaris, no big deal. Slap it in there and good to go. You wanna have this, you can't delete on this. This is what helps lubricate everything. So gotta make sure that guy's in good shape. All right, now to remove the actual transmission dealio we got going on here. Um, right now I have the transmission in neutral, as you can see, spin it and to the main, this gear does not move at all. So we are in neutral. So one thing I did off camera is I did pop off the uh, front cover plate here for the, um, the shifter, that's where this guy goes. I just wanna remove everything out of here. Don't worry about where everything is or where it's marked or anything like that. Just make sure you're in neutral, that's the easiest thing to do, um, just for putting things back together. But we wanna remove everything, so this way we can uh, pop out the uh, shift drum that's on the other side here. All right, so once you have everything off for the shifter side of things, uh, you're gonna need to get a long extension, the T27 Torx bit. And there's four bolts in here. I'm gonna have to get in your way for a second, sorry. You'll see there's four holes in the gear here. It's actually this way you can get on those bolts. They're actually screws. 
Now you can get these screws out with a magnet if you'd like. You don't really need to if you're pulling out the entire assembly because you're going to be down in there anyway so you can retrieve those screws. I'll show you how to get them back in when we go to do that because as you can imagine it's not fun but it's actually a little trick you can do to get them back in pretty easily. Now the one thing I'm not going to cover unfortunately in this video for you guys, I apologize, is the output shaft for the uh, four wheel drive that comes out the front. Um, it is pretty easy to get out of there. Uh, you just have to remove the uh, seal and then there's a bolt down there and I believe everything pops out. There's I think like some circlips or whatever in there too. But um, I'm not gonna cover it in this video. We're just mostly concentrated on the transmission side of things. Um, Wanna show you guys uh, how to inspect everything and make sure everything is good to go or how to do some repairs if you need to do some repairs. All right, so all of our screws are removed now. Now we can actually remove the whole transmission assembly. So right now we're gonna go ahead and just start pulling, pulling out on everything. Hopefully I don't ruin the camera angle by doing this, but you gotta wiggle the main gear out. And these guys kind of all have to come out at the same time. It's a little bit of fun. All right, so here's a shift drum. Set that off to the side. Here's your main transmission, your shift forks. All right, so here's the main transmission basically here itself. Um, sometimes um, it's pretty known because of how thin it is. This transmission, or this is the reverse uh, chain right here that I'm pointing to with my thumb. Um, that guy is pretty known to break. Uh, so want to inspect on that, make sure everything looks good with it. Make sure she's got, uh, when it's in place, make sure it's got good tension, it's not too loose. Uh, but right now when you have this guy out, you want to inspect all the bearings, obviously. All of mine are good here. Um, make sure they're not war. You want to make sure the um, these guys here are the, basically what helps. That's what the shift fork rides on and that's what changes your gears. Um, you want to make sure all that stuff is good, nice and tight, no big play. You want to have a little bit of play but not enough where it's going to cause issues. Um, everything here is looking good with mine. It's a little war on this guy but I'm not going to worry about that. It could be like that from the factory actually it looks like for, I believe that is for the reverse. Yeah, so that's for the uh, Reverse side of things right there. Mine looks a little war, but they might be like that from the factory. So to change these bearings, you'd use a puller. Uh, so you just pull this guy right off. Um, using your press, you'd slide this guy off. Then you have a uh, snap ring. You pop the gear off. Then you'd slide off the next gear. And that's got, also got a snap ring. Then you slide that guy off and you can go through and replace any gears that you might have broken. This is also a good time, I was just gonna mention, to look at all the teeth of the gears. Uh, spin it over slowly in your hand. Make sure you don't pinch your hand in it at all. Oops, I gotta make sure we're in. Get it out of gear here. There we go. Oops, we're not neutral. There's neutral, there we go. So you can spin everything and make sure all the gears look good. Mine look excellent. Um, like I said there was no issues with this transmission, so not doing any repairs to it. I just want to open it up and make sure everything was good because we're doing a once over this quad before I go ahead and sell it. So everything looks really good. Uh, I'm just going to set this off to the side. Then we have the main, other main gear here that uh, basically, damn it. Well now's a good time to retrieve your screws that you forgot about. I uh, just remembered. Oopsie, so you should have four of them. There's one, two, three. I think the fourth one's down there somewhere. No big deal. All right, so um, with this guy, you want to inspect, um, basically this is almost like a pinion gear in a way, uh, but you want to inspect this guy and make sure everything looks good with it. Um, same thing with where it meets up with the output shaft for your um, four-wheel drive. Everything looks good with mine. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into removing that guy because uh, everything with mine is good. I already know that. This is more of a check over and a how to replace stuff if you need to. Now with this guy, to replace the bearings, a little bit tougher because everything has to kind of come off here. So you have to remove the hour bearing to start here. Then you can remove this guy. This is the, uh, the gear for the chain. Then a snap ring holds on this gear. Then you would remove the, the collar that holds down the bearing. Then you can remove this bearing off of here. So, cause this is uh, all one piece with the, um, the shaft and the gear here are all one piece so you'd have to kind of work backwards to get everything off so not too bad it's a little bit of, a little bit of fun work to do but these can be a little bit uh scary when you first look at them but don't be scared to, to dig into your stuff it's it's all learning experience worst case scenario 
you can uh, look up manuals and stuff like that online. And that's how I learned all this stuff is just not being scared and digging in. <laughs> Sometimes it, it can butt you in the butt. But with something like this, it's actually very simple. Um, and there's plenty of manuals online, especially for a Polaris 570. That's part of why I'm making this video is to help with that. All right, so now is the fun part. You got everything fixed, time to put everything back together. So we're gonna start with this guy here. We're just gonna kind of rest it in place here. We're not gonna put it all the way in because we need to work around it to get in the transmission. Like I said, if you just did some repairs on this, uh, make sure everything's put back in order because uh, if not, uh, you're gonna get things back together and realize it doesn't work. So make sure you pay proper attention. I'll shoot this right here so you guys can pause it if you need to, to see where everything goes. All right, that was plenty of time. Got your screenshot, you're good to go. All right, so, <laughs> all right, now we're gonna go ahead and throw this guy back in. This is where things get a little bit tricky. So uh, basically the uh, big gear here goes between the chain for the reverse and the uh, larger gear here uh, all right so like i said loosely fit it don't push everything down just yet now we got to take our shift forks here this guy and the drum that everything works off of this is how we're able to shift this is what moves the our forks up and down and in and out dude does the whole dealio now this has some pins on it here as you can see these pins go towards the rear of the transaxle. Um, so this way everything works properly. This goes down in this hole. Kind of have to do this all as one, one deal. Like I said, I try to aim for neutral if I can. It's kind of hard to. You just kind of fi find where everything does want to drop in. And get it down in there. Actually, I got to drop this guy in and bring this back out for a second. But basically your shift forks go on to these two guys. You wanna make sure they go in because if they don't, then yeah, you're not gonna be shifting so hot. So a little bit hard to do while I'm trying to film here, but let's see here if I can get this to drop in. There we go. All right, so once you have it in like that, you realize you have it upside down. Yes, I do, damn it. All right, so it goes like that, like I said, the dowels are gonna have to go towards the rear of the quad, or the rear of the transaxle. So they should be pointing kind of like this direction. All right, now we're gonna slowly put everything into place here. Kind of massage everything slowly in. Now is the fun part, you gotta try to line up the dowels into the shift drum here. While also lining up the bearing holes. All right, and I believe we're in. Yes, we are, and we're in a gear, I think. All right, so like I said, I try to set everything up to be in neutral, uh, just because I can spin things, make sure everything's good to go, and then if you wanted to, it's a little tricky to do, you can take a pair of pliers and shift, or even a screwdriver, that's what I was doing the other day. Get in here, just gently put it into each gear, just to make sure you got everything correct, so. That should be, uh, what gear is that? That's park right there, because I can't turn this guy. Then we go one click. It's a little hard to feel each click. Uh, that was two gears, actually. Right there, that should be reverse. Then we go to the middle. This is neutral, so we hold on to this. Oops, not all in, hang on. There we go, that should be neutral. There you go. And we go another click here. That should be like low range. There you go. And then the final click is high range. There you go. And you can actually feel how hard it is to turn this guy too when it's in high. So I have to go through and tweak all this because it's locking up a little bit. There we go. Or is that not in all the way? That's why that's not dropped in all the way here. There it goes. Now we're in. All right, so yeah, there's high range right there. As you can see, you'll actually feel how tight, like high range is the turn. But that all looks good. So 
That's one way you can kind of check to make sure everything's working good. Like I said, I'm just gonna put it back into neutral for now. Just makes things easier for when we go to line our gears back up in a minute for the shifter. There you go, that should be neutral. There you go. You can tell neutral because you can still spin this guy here and this guy and nothing, nothing's touching. All right, now to get to those pesky little screws down in here. It sounds like a fun time, but it's not as bad as you would think because we're gonna do a little trick here. So first thing you wanna do is line up the screw holes with the plate. It can be a little tricky, just gotta use what you got lying around, a stick or something, or your, what we're using for our, uh, our Torx bay here. Long extension. Get them close. Then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take our screw, wherever it just went, I just dropped it. So take, take a rag, and you're gonna take and put it on your Torx bit and then put it into the screw that you just dropped. Put it into the screw and you can rip off all the excess. So we're just gonna have a little bit of rag. The reason we're doing just a little bit of rag is because unfortunately it's gonna stay in there. You're not gonna be able to get it back out. Um, and that tiny bit of rag's not gonna hurt anything uh, with the transmission. And we're gonna be flushing this after the first ride anyway, just to make sure we're good. But what that does is it allows our screw to stick onto our extension and get down in there. Whee! And there we go. I'm just gonna start them because I'm you don't want to tighten it down the first time because the plate's gonna have to move around a little bit in order to get the other screws in. But each screw you just do the same thing, just take take the rag, put it on the end of the torx bit. Stick the screw on there, push it hard, rip off the excess. All right, so now that you have the um, little uh, plate to tighten down the uh, bearings in, make sure everything's nice and tight, should be. Yep, everything feels good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put our plastic um, oil deal here back in. Kind of just falls into place like so. Holes should line up. Get our small Torx bits here. This is easier to do now than when you have the main chain in place. You can do it both ways, but this, this is a lot easier. Let's make sure everything spins good, nothing's in contact, we look good. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the main gear in, along with the chain. This you kinda just have to work on with this guy, make sure she's fully on all the teeth. Oops, started falling in already. There we go. And it should slide in nicely. If I get the chain on all the way that is. There we go. There we go. All right, you'll see the chain's nice and loose. Then we go ahead and grab our tensioner. And so this is the guy that presses against against the chain. It goes right here. Put that pin in. And then you have a little cam deal here. This goes in with the other dowel pin. And at the same time, we're gonna grab our spring. So this guy goes in and basically turns until it tightens. Then the spring, you push on here and up and around you go, just like that. So it should kind of look like that deal. Chain's nice and snug. You can test everything out again if you want. I know all my stuff's good. And then now we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. All right, so now I put the cover back on. Uh, first thing I gotta do is make sure all of our mating surfaces are nice and clean. Uh, how you can do that is just take a, a razor blade, just clean off all the old silicone. Uh, comes off nice and easy. Uh, basically, we just have to make sure everything is nice and flush this way. Uh, everything goes back together nicely. The silicone will kind of fit in, fill in any gaps we're going to do. So, I'm going to grab my silicone and I'm going to start silicone in this cover up. All right, so for this, I'm just using the Permatex uh, gasket maker. Um, should work fine for what we're doing here. 
Uh, just need to get the stuff that's oil resistant. So this way uh, everything goes together nice and smooth here. So we're just gonna go ahead and spit everything out nice. Especially on the bottom, you don't want any leaks. One little spot to remember is right here in the center there's a little spot for a screw. You gotta hit that with a little bit of RTV as well. All right, and now we're ready to put the cover back on. So putting the cover back on can be a little tricky. Basically, it's got to line up this guy here. And basically, just want to slowly tap everything into place here. It's where it gets a little bit tricky. All right, guys, so it's actually a few days later. Um, as you can see, Transaxle's back in the quad actually. Um, it's been busy with working everything and I had to get this guy out of the way so I just put everything back together so I could move the quad. Um, just kind of pulled it out of the way so I needed the suspension back on. So this is the side of the transmission where all the gear linkage and everything happens. So first off we start with this little gear here. As you can see, my camera would focus better, there we go. Um, there's a little dot on it right about there. And also the gear only goes on one way. If you look at it down here, there's a wider notch. So this guy's gonna go, the way I have the transmission set up basically, right now, should go on basically, so this way that guy is level, just like that. All right, so the way, I, I forget what gear it's actually in right now, but I make it to this way that the dot is basically on the horizon. So next you're gonna grab this gear here. You can see there's two dots on the bottom, and we're gonna line those two dots up with the one dot on the other one. Basically the single dot goes right in between the two dots. Um, the manual actually says likewise. I can post a picture right here, but it actually ends up being the same exact spot. But those two should line up. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera. You can probably barely just see it. I'll zoom in on the video for you. All right, so once that's in, uh, for this quad it does not have the lockout deal. So some quads have a lockout. Instead it has just a spacer like this guy here. That slides on to this shaft over here. Then we grab this ordeal. So this is actually the um, what uh, locks um, each gear in basically. You'll see how that works in a second, but again, the splines on this have a little spot right there that only goes one way, so we're gonna line that up. Like so, push it in, push that all the way in, just let it dangle to the bottom. So then we got this guy here. This is what actually helps lock everything into each gear. And again, this is only a one-way deal, only goes on one way. So the, the raised edge goes to the outside. As you can see, when it's all said and done, this guy comes up. And then the final thing we have is actually a little spring that helps lock everything in. It can be a little difficult to get in, so you gotta wrestle with it. There we go, come on, there it goes. Perfect, and that's how it should all look all said and done. Now we're gonna do the same thing, use some nice gasket maker along the edge here. I'm gonna seal everything up nice and put the front cover on and I'll show you how to connect the linkage. All right, so now we got the front cover here. I'm gonna go ahead and slap that bad boy on. Just press it on nice and smooth, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and grab our bolts. So there's two bolts that'll have plates like this. One goes over here on this side and the other one goes over here on this side. And then the rest of them just screw right in. So basically both these tabs that have the holes in them, I put them basically at a straight angle, like a 90 degree. Kind of like that deal. Same thing with this one. All they do is one goes to the brake line over here and does, you have a little zip tie that goes through. Just to hold the brake line back, kind of away from the exhaust there. Don't want them seeing each other. It's not a good mix. And then the rest of them just snug up. Don't have to go crazy. It's the whole one I'm here. Just wipe up your mess. So now you have the little sensor that basically tells you what gear the quad is currently in. Slides right on. It's easiest to put it on the way that it came off the quad because then you're gonna try to have to spin it. There is a tab for it to lock into down here. Actually, I'll show you that real quick. Let me pop it back off if I can get it off. Come here. 
So there is a little notch here that has to go into this hole here. So this way it keeps it from rotating when putting it in gear. Then you got your little snap ring that goes on there. Just slides right on. Might need a little help from a screwdriver or something. Boom, on she goes. And the final step, get your linkage on. Again, the linkage only goes one way. You just gotta find a little notch. Looks like it's back here, actually. And then the bolt that holds it all on. All right, tighten that up. This little guy that's broken on mine, I just usually zip tie it back up. Clips in right back there. And then harness in. And this is the uh, speed sensor right there. I already had that plugged in back here. If you guys can see that on camera, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's all good to go now. Now I just gotta add a zip tie here and fill the thing with gear oil, and she's good to go. You can cycle through the gears real quick just to make sure everything feels good. So that's park actually is what I'm in now. Then you got reverse, neutral, low, and high. So everything feels good. Give her a couple run throughs. Everything feels pretty good. All right guys, final step is to fill the transmission up, or transaxle rather, you gotta remove that bolt right there. It's a 5 16 Allen head, you take that out, fill it with the Polaris uh, AGL oil, I believe is what they call it, and that's basically it. Yeah, she's done, she's back together. Now I just gotta go for a test ride, make sure everything looks good, and continue on the rebuild of this thing. So with that, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate everything you guys do. If you guys want to see more projects like this and more to come, make sure you guys are following along and subscribing because we have a lot more coming up that you're going to want to see. So we'll have to catch you guys next time on Let Dirt Fly. Have you forgotten away?